Last week, Allegheny District Attorney Stephen Zapala made news after he ordered prosecutors in his office not to offer plea deals to a black criminal defense attorney by the name of Milton Rayford. This after Rayford had called out the DA's office and the criminal legal system in general for systemic racism during an appearance in court. Some might say DA Zapala's response kind of proved Mr. Rayford's point that by refusing to offer plea deals to his clients is evidence of bias. Here to discuss is Janelle Griffith. Janelle is the national reporter on race and policing for NBC.com. Uh, Janelle, great to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. This is an important story. I agree. All right, so I understand that there were some recent developments in this story. Yes, so today, uh, the uh, district attorney, Mr. Zapala, who is facing calls to resign, some people have said that it's impossible for him to be impartial and to do his job effectively and that he has shown he's biased, like you said, by implementing this policy in the first place. Today, he released a memo, a revised um, policy that he sent to his staff yesterday. And in that memo, he essentially reverses his initial policy that had directed them not to offer plea deals to clients of the black defense attorney, uh, Mr. Rayford. And so now, but with the context that it's only after he faced backlash and while he's facing calls mm -hmm. to resign that he reversed course on this policy. Now, Janelle, he said his explanation, well, he gave the explanation that he was trying to separate uh, Mr. Rayford's cases and to make sure that the office was looking into his allegations uh, of, of discriminatory practice. Uh, do, you, do you buy his explanation? Well, I think he was essentially forced to reverse it because a growing number of, of elected officials, uh, politicians, criminal justice advocates, they were saying, even, even if you weren't uh, racist towards people that Mr. Rayford represented, your policy is biased by punishing his clients for a beef you have with him that is biased in itself and you can't implement a policy that targets one attorney and their clients it seems like it's a personal yeah. disagreement that the two of them have that they need to resolve and it shouldn't involve the defendants they didn't say whatever it was that mr rayford said that offended him in the first place and it's worth noting that Mr. Rayford has said something that many people say. Many people believe that our criminal justice system mm -hmm. is has systemic issues. It treats people of color and black people and Hispanic people in particular harsher. They face harsher punishments. Those were all things that Mr. Rayford said on the record in a hearing last month. And those comments upset Mr. Zapala. He took particular offense to it and then it prompted him to implement this policy, basically saying, we're not gonna offer any plea deals to his clients, which on its face right. just seems outlandish. Well, no, it's it's unethical. I mean, okay, so give us the breakdown of what happened uh, last week when DA Zapala was called out in criminal court um, in Pittsburgh by the black defense attorney, Milton Rayford. What, give us a context in which he made these these statements. Okay, so Mr. Rayford was in, during a court hearing last month for one of his clients who pleaded guilty for uh, stabbing from 2019. After that hearing, Mr. Rayford asked the judge if he can go on the record and the judge allowed him to. And he basically went on a length, he issued a lengthy statement where he took issue with the criminal justice system at large. He took issue with how the courts have, ha have responded to COVID how it has been inflexible with regard to certain defendants. And he just told the judge that, frankly, he believes that the DA's office there and our criminal justice system in general, that it's systemically racist. And Mr. Zapala caught wind of it and he said, OK, that's how you feel. Then we won't enter into any plea deals with you or your clients. But Mr. Rayford, it's worth noting that in that specific hearing, he didn't accuse Zapala's office of doing anything inappropriately with that specific client. He just said that mm -hmm. in a larger context, he feels like the DA is not as progressive or forward thinking as other district attorneys in other parts of the country. And he also said 
after all of this made national news, he said that the reason why he issued this lengthy statement was because he has tried unsuccessfully to sit down with Mr. Zappala. He said he has made many requests over the past several months to sit down with him to discuss many of the issues he raised during that court hearing and that his requests have gone unanswered. So he said he felt frustrated and that was what led him to issue that lengthy statement in the first place. Now, could Zapala's actions cause a chilling effect, not just on attorney Rayford, but other attorneys who might be too afraid to speak up for, for fear of possible retribution, which in turn means they can't properly represent their clients? Well, it's actually already, Mr. Rayford has said that it has already had an impact. He said that some of his clients were calling him and that they were concerned that mm. maybe he isn't the best person to represent them if it is if Mr. Zappala was going to essentially target him in this way. Um, now, I suppose that may change with the statement that Zappala put up, Mr. Zappala put out today. But it it is concerning because it does raise the issue of Mr. Zappala was targeting one attorney who criticized his office and the uh, Pennsylvania, the ACLU in Pennsylvania, the American Civil Liberties Union. The executive director of that division in Pennsylvania, he said that it's his First Amendment right to say what he wanted to say in court and that Mr. Zappala doesn't have the right to essentially retaliate against uh, Mr. Rayford for this. And if anything, he's now, it seems, proving his point that he is, in fact, biased. He's direct. He was directing his staff to be biased in his initial memo. And there are many people who feel that it was just childish that he shouldn't be retaliating against potential clients or current clients of Mr. Rayford for a disagreement that is between these two men, that maybe they need to sit down, they need to hash this out, but that it doesn't have to involve other members of the criminal justice system because they shouldn't be targeted for what Mr. Rayford said. And there are facts to support some of what he said with regard to Pittsburgh itself. We know that there have been reports, the appeal.org did a report in 2018 that found there are disparities in how children in the criminal justice system there are treated versus white children. Black children are almost always treated, tried as adults, whereas white children are not. And these are the types of disparities that Mr. Rayford said he was referring to when he made that statement that it's a racist justice system. These are the exact facts that he was referring to. Now, prosecutors remain the only actors who are subject to almost no regulation at all. So we rarely see them suffer consequences for prosecutorial misconduct. But do you think that DA Zapala will face any consequences with the State Bar Association or with voters? He's been the DA in that county for almost 25 years. Could this be what finally costs him his seat? I think that, that he's definitely put himself in the spotlight with this policy and the ACLU in Pennsylvania they are calling for him to be investigated. I think it's possible because the policy, from all the experts that I spoke to, all the legal experts, they said the policy he implemented was on its face biased and that he cannot do that. He doesn't have the right to do that. And I think he knew that and that's why he reversed it now. Uh, yesterday in his memo yesterday that was released today, I think he realized that, you know, I don't have free reign to just respond this way to a criticism from a single attorney. I can't just now take free reign to have what he said impact all of his clients. It's just not fair. Mm -hmm. Imagine the policies that he's made that we don't know about. Um, that's what's so scary about this story. All right, Janelle Griffith, national reporter on race and policing for NBC.com. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.